I do really vividly remember standing at the start of that second run, just really focusing on what had to be done. Trying to just switch off the mind from thinking about, I've been training for four years and it's four years if I mess this up, and you can't afford to think about all of that. That's just distraction. Hi, I'm Zali Segel. I was bronze medal in 1998 in Nagano in alpine skiing and world champion the next year in 99. But now I am the independent candidate running for the federal election for Warringah. I was always one of those annoying little kids that's very competitive. So I was very athletic, uh, but very quickly skiing took over. Uh, at the time I was actually, ironically, it was figure skating or skiing in winter. And I think I outgrew figure skating. So it's good that we picked skiing. 17, I was pretty young. I did quit halfway through my year 12 and left school for the sake of qualifying, um, which was a pretty big commitment and it was a big leap of faith that my parents had in terms of I would come back and finish my HSC the following year. But it was a really momentous Olympic Games. It was really inspiring to see what was possible. Of course, Manly is not your most well-known ski resort, um, so it did require a lot of sacrifice. I was on the road a lot. It was very isolating to have to be in Europe for four or five months at a time. So you really have to be strong and resilient uh, because not every day is a good day. <laughs> I was third last to ski in the second run. So basically everyone's come down before me and, base, and because I was third after first run, I knew that if I crossed that finishing line with a one next to my time, it meant that at worst I was on the podium, I had a bronze medal. So that was the only thing I wanted to see when I crossed that finish line. And I really vividly remember that feeling of reaching for the line, crossing and you know, huge crowd and huge noise. But in my head, it just all went silent and you quickly turn around to look at the, the scoreboard and the electronic board which shows your time and your ranking. And as soon as I saw that number one that meant that I was at worst third, just the sense of relief was just phenomenal. Look, it was really big because I know some people think, oh, bronze medal, it's not a gold medal. But we haven't, you know, winter sports is, you're really against the odds. Uh, and back then, we just didn't have the support. Uh, and look, and then I got to carry the flag in the closing ceremony, which, which again was a really, you know, really important moment for me. To win the race, you have to be the fastest down there. So it comes down to your performance, not their performance. You can't control what they do. Uh, and so I take that same approach with, with the campaign. It's not about trying to undermine or smear and smear campaigns. It's about focusing on my performance and what I deliver and what I stand for. Uh, that's a really important part of it for me. There's a lot of similarities and also at the bar as a lawyer, you know, standing in front of the judge, you're well prepared, you, you've done all the work, you're prepared for the case, but there's always going to be a curveball and something unexpected happens. So you have to be ready to adjust, which is very much the nature of sport. I am proud of having contributed to the development of winter sports in Australia. And I think anyone who's doing their best and putting 110% in deserves our, our recognition and, and, and sort of don't deserve to be cut down. So for me, I'll always be really proud of that contribution to Australian sporting history.